Hey there guys, this is Don from Pronatech. Today I'm going to show you how I built my high performance gas powered air compressor. I needed a, a high CFM output compressor for a couple projects I'm building and I looked around for how much a 20 plus CFM compressor cost and I was kind of blown away by how much uh, they get for those. So I already have about a 10 CFM uh, compressor in the garage, electric, but I'm planning on building a house off-grid, so I needed a gas-powered compressor that would do a very uh, high output. So I decided to build my own, and uh, this is the process that I went through. I'll show you how I built it, all the components that I uh, used, and I'll show you how you can build it yourself for a lot cheaper. Uh, all said and done, this uh, compressor cost me about uh, about six hundred dollars so if you uh, source some uh, components just like I did uh, the most expensive thing I bought was the compressor head and I got that off eBay for four hundred dollars uh, to find a 20 plus CFM uh, compressor head triple head uh, they're they're kind of pricey, so that was the most expensive part of this. You would think that the Honda 13 horse engine would be, but I actually found a deal uh, for that off of eBay. I was just going to buy a Predator, uh, one from Harbor Freight, and I ended up getting this one for a lot cheaper than I could even get the uh, Predator from Harbor Freight. I'll explain that later as I get into it, how I got that so much cheaper. Um, it was actually damaged uh, engine and so I had to uh, do a little bit of welding to uh, bring it back to factory specs. But anyway, uh, so stay with me. I'll show you how I built this and how you can build your own. All right, thanks. Okay, so here's the tank that I used. I got it off Craigslist for 20 bucks, and this is what the project's gonna be built around. It's an old Freon tank from air conditioning. Right, guys, so here's the tank I'm gonna use for the uh, compressor storage tank and for the mount for the engine and the compressor head. So what I've gone ahead and done is cut off the big handle that was on the top of this. Um, and I've also cut holes for the bungs. These are the ports where my unloader valve is going to screw into and my uh, output port for air coming out of the tank. And on the bottom I've also cut one right here. This is the bottom for uh, a drain for a ball valve. So what I'm going to do now is um, I've polished off around each bung and I'm going to weld the bungs in and I've also got a leg to weld on the back end because I have tires uh, that I'm going to weld or I'm going to weld the uh, bracket for the axle to hold the tires on so that I can roll this around. So I'll get to it and start welding.
So I just wanted to show what I'm doing on the bottom of the uh, motor mount and compressor mount plate that's going to be welded on top of the compressor. Uh, here is the compressor tank and here is the flat mount that everything's going to mount on. Uh, on the bottom, I didn't want to try and reach in there and put a nut on the bottom of each uh, bolt for the uh, motor mount for the engine. So I made this plate that slides front to back and I tapped each hole uh, for the mounting bolts to uh, mount the, the engine. That way I can adjust the belt and I can just set the engine on top, thread the bolts down in and not have to worry about trying to um, align nuts and washers and all that. So I just want to show that before I weld the motor mount plate onto the tank uh, how I did that. All right. So now I've got the top plate, uh, the mounting plate welded onto the tank and I need some handles so I can start moving this thing around. These are just some old pieces of handlebar I had laying around so I decided to weld them on for handles. They work perfect because they're the right size for the rubber grips that I bought. Alright, now that I have the handles welded on, uh, I set the engine up and on the mounting rails and the compressor head. This way I could start mocking up exactly how long uh, between the two pulleys that I needed for belt lengths. Uh, basically, I didn't have video of it, but I wrapped a uh, rope around it and measured what my lengths would be and then I ordered belts uh, accordingly. All right, I uh, had to mock up a battery box because this is an electric start compressor um, for this Honda engine. So I made a little box and I put it on the back end of the axle because it was really the only place I could find that uh, it would fit. <laughs> so that's why uh, this has ended up on the back end. All right, so I realized I needed a guard for the belt on the back side, so I had some leftover uh, awning aluminum that I found in a dumpster, and uh, I welded up a, a guard with my TIG welder. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, how the controls work on a gas-powered air compressor compared to a electric air compressor. This unit right here, this valve, is what's known as the unloader valve or the pilot valve. And what it does, it's kind of the heart of the gas-powered compressor. And when the pressure reaches its 
uh, peak at 125 psi, this kicks it basically down to idle on the uh, gas-powered engine. And it also unloads the head of the compressor that you can see the copper line, the small one going up on the right, goes up and unloads uh, the pressure on the uh, compressor head. So what it does is it, uh, when it reaches uh, 125 psi, it kicks the engine down to idle, it unlocks the head so it's basically freewheeling, not doing any compressing, and until you use the air down to uh, 90 psi and then it kicks back on. Basically the same process happens in electric compressor but this one does it all mechanically through air pressures and that's how uh, a gas air compressor works. You can see the black tube down uh, running down the bottom of the unloader valve uh, goes over to the engine and uses the throttle control uh, piston to put the engine back down to idle and that's basically how uh, the only difference between a gas compressor and a uh, electric air compressor works. Here you can see the lever for the unloader valve that's on the top. This is what you pull when you start the gas operated engine on a gas compressor. Uh, you flip it up to start and it unloads the pressure that way there's no load on the engine when it starts until you can get it warmed up and then you flip it down for a run and that's basically how this uh, valve works it goes up this line unloads the head so that there's no pressure uh, in the head as it's running and all of the other controls on this compressor are pretty much the same as an electric compressor I have a regulator here that you set your outgoing pressure and a valve that turns on the output on and off. All right, so let me start it up and show you how it works. Put the choke on, fuel's on. Let it warm up for a little bit before we drop the uh, valve on the unloader valve. That way, the motor can warm up without a load on it. Once it is up to speed and warmed up, after a few minutes, we can drop the unloader valve so the compressor head will kick in as well as the throttle control. that once the tank comes up to pressure, which on this is about 125 to 130 PSI, the unloader valve kicks it out, brings it back to idle. All right, uh, so I thought I'd give you a view of the logo that I painted for this uh, project. Uh, I thought the uh, tank kind of looked like an old 1950s rocket, so I just decided to call the thing uh, Rocket Air. So that's how it turned out. This is another view of the controls, so you can see my valve and my regulator. All right, at the beginning of the video, I told you that I was able to build this uh, compressor for about uh, 600 to $650 actually is probably more realistic but the reason I was able to do that was because I actually bid on this engine on eBay and was able to get it for uh, $102 so the reason I was able to get that for $102 is because it was damaged it was a brand new Honda uh, engine but it had been dropped in the warehouse and it broke off uh, the engine mount on one end of the uh, crankcase. Well, so I took a chance. I had lots of pictures that he had put in the auction and I thought I could repair it. So I went ahead and uh, bid on it and won the auction. And uh, I had to do quite a bit of 
fabricating and welding to get this thing back to uh, factory, you know, specs so that I could have it at, you know, the same mounting bracket as a factory motor. But it took me about uh, four hours worth of work to get this thing uh, lined up and build a new piece that would fit in there and then TIG weld everything back together. But the end result is I have an engine now that uh, was way better than the, I was just gonna buy the Harbor Freight version, Chinese copy, but this way I got a uh, Honda uh, genuine engine and uh, I think the longevity is quite a bit longer for you know one of these than one of the Chinese copies so I was pretty happy with that all right guys that's it for my DIY high performance gas powered air compressor build hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of this hope it inspired you to maybe build your own if you have any questions about how to build this it wasn't super complex or difficult basically it's just a matter of doing some welding to uh, get it whatever tank you use um, compatible so that you can uh, hook up the components you need to make a compressed air tank um, pretty much if you buy the compressor head and an engine and a few of the components uh, it's not a difficult build if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments section and I'll be glad to answer them about this uh, build or any other project I have and uh, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe. That way you'll be up to date with all of my uh, builds. I've got a bunch of projects coming out. Uh, building a DIY uh, high performance TIG pedal right now so that you can build one in your own garage to upgrade your TIG. Um, I'm building a fab brake, hydraulic fab brake, and I'm building an electromagnetic uh, drill. And I've got a bunch of projects going. So if you want to see those things, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll be up to date and you'll get to see them as they come out. I appreciate you guys watching and thank you and have a great day.